None of the producers have any financial interest in the products or procedures shown. Collagen, the fiber of life. It is what many vital structures in the human body are made of. Cross-linking that occurs normally with age increases the rigidity and tensile strength of collagen. Sila et al. utilized cross-linking to the body's own advantage by artificially inducing cross-links in the corneas of keratoconic patients. Corneal collagen cross-linking or CXL acts by increasing the number of intra and interhelical as well as intermicrofibrillar collagen bonds thus increasing the corneal rigidity and making it less susceptible to deformation riboflavin plays a dual role here that of inducing crosslinks as well as protecting the endothelium and other structures from the uva radiation however a corneal thickness of 400 microns is essential for safely cross-linking the cornea. CACXL, or Contact Lens Assisted Cross-Linking, is a new technique that has been described by us for safely cross-linking thinner corneas. To understand this better, let us first take a deeper look at the role of riboflavin. Riboflavin induces cross-links in the presence of UV light. It also, however, decreases the UV toxic threshold from 4 milliwatt per centimeter square to about 0.35. Toxic damage to the endothelial cells is, however, prevented by the other role of riboflavin, whereby its absorption coefficient limits UV irradiance through a 400 micron thick cornea to safe levels. Thus, corneal endothelium is safe provided there is 400 microns of riboflavin-saturated corneal stroma above it. Hence, corneas lesser than 400 microns are not amenable to conventional cross-linking due to lack of sufficient corneal thickness for UV attenuation to safe levels at the endothelium. To overcome this, in CACXL, we attain 400 microns thickness for ultraviolet attenuation by creating extra precorneal layers composed of a riboflavin soap contact lens and a thin subcontact lens riboflavin film. These two together create an absorption medium in the precorneal space by artificially increasing the thickness. According to the Beer-Lambert's law, each unit layer of riboflavin soaked cornea absorbs an equal fraction of UV light passing through it. After epithelial removal, the point of minimum pachymetry is marked and measured. If less than 400 microns, CACXL is proceeded with. A UV barrier-free contact lens is then soaked in riboflavin solution for the same half hour that the de-epithelialized cornea is soaked for. The solution is applied to the cornea every three minutes for half an hour. The contact lens is then placed on the cornea and pachymetry rechecked over the contact lens to confirm that the combined thickness is now above 400 microns. UVA light of 370 nanometer is then applied according to the Dresden protocol. Riboflavin is applied both under and over the contact lens once every three minutes. Care is taken to keep the contact lens centered. The sub and supra contact lens riboflavin films are reapplied once every three minutes. At the end of half an hour, the contact lens is removed, a BSS wash is given, and a fresh contact lens is applied to complete epithelial healing. CACXL may also be performed with accelerated cross-linking by keeping the total energy constant at 5.4 joules per centimeter square. It is important to use a contact lens without a UV barrier for CACXL. This can be confirmed by checking UV transmittance with a digital UV meter as well as from the product literature. Being hydrophilic, 
Good absorption of riboflavin occurs within the lens. The soft lens design allows it to take the shape of the cornea. Any air bubbles trapped under the lens may be squeezed out. During treatment, the contact lens may buckle, creating an uneven subcontact lens riboflavin film, which may lead to hot and cold spots. Intraoperative centration, maintenance and recommended installation of supra and subcontact lens riboflavin films solves this. The absolute contact lens thickness is 90 microns. Approximate thickness of the subcontact lens riboflavin film is about 20 microns. The supra and subcontact lens riboflavin films on the contact lens contribute to UVA attenuation. The supra contact lens riboflavin film corresponds to the pre-corneal film of about 70 microns as described by Wallensack et al which plays an important role in standard cross-linking for UV attenuation to non-toxic levels at the endothelium. This corresponds to the supra-contact lens film in CACXL. The pre-corneal film with hyperosmolar solution is thinner and can lead to greater UV transmittance. As compared to hyperosmolar CXL, CACXL requires no additional surgical time and is not dependent on intra or inter-individual variations in corneal swelling properties. Also, an artificially hydrated cornea may not have the same effect following CXL as a normal cornea because of more widely spaced corneal collagen fibers. Methylcellulose riboflavin film applied as a reservoir within a ring has also been described as a possible solution for thin corneas. However, the flat nature of the resulting meniscus would lead to formation of an uneven precorneal film. Epion CXL is losing favor because of reduced riboflavin absorption. With CACXL, although surface irradiance at the level of the corneal stroma is reduced secondary to absorption by the soaked CL, we obtained good clinical results in our study. Clinical and OCT stromal demarcation line was seen at two weeks. Postoperative haze and its regression are similar to that in conventional CXL. To conclude, CACXL is able to provide effective cross-linking in corneas less than 400 microns without endothelial damage by artificially increasing thickness with the help of a pre-corneal contact lens.